In the name of Jesus, amen. In our scripture reading, we heard the parable of the persistent widow, which is Jesus telling a story about an unjust judge who wasn't giving this particular woman justice, and so she continued to petition him and pester him and approach him again and again and again until he finally did give her justice. Jesus ends the parable by saying, how much more will God give to his people who cry out to him night and day? Now, it's very easy to walk away from this parable with the idea that if we pray hard enough, if we have enough faith, if we are persistent like that widow, widow was, then God is going to give us what we want. Measure that faith, keep approaching him, be fervent about it, and we can force God's hand so that we get what we're asking for. Interestingly, when Jesus ends this parable, note that he says, how much more will God give justice to his people who cry out night and day. He does not say, how much more will God give justice to his people because they cry out night and day. It's important to understand, and one of the things that this parable teaches us is the distinction between being determined and the one who determines. Jesus makes it clear that it is our role as God's people to be determined in our prayers, as we approach God, crying out to him day and night, asking him for what we need and what we want, but also understanding by faith that it is he who determines. Entire theologies have been built around this idea that if we pray hard enough and with enough faith, that God will give us whatever we're asking for. Is that the best way, I mean really, for God to give in and give us what we're asking for? What if he knows better? The distinction between one who is determined and the one who determines is that God will determine based on his criteria, laced with love and wisdom, whether we get what we want. Sometimes the things for which we pray shouldn't be given to us. Back in high school, I had a very good friend named Eric. Eric and I did everything together, especially sophomore and junior year. And one of the things we liked to do the most was cruise around the streets of Des Moines in his mom's station wagon, looking as cool as we possibly could, trying to impress as many people as we could while we're listening to Journey, driving around the streets of Des Moines. I had a car. I had a brown Datsun B210 hatchback with manual transmission. How bad must that car have been if we figured we had a better shot of impressing people with a station wagon? But well, if we'd go, and we had a great time together. But then something happened after the junior year, the summer of between junior year and senior year. Eric's dad bought him a Camaro, a dark blue Camaro with light blue trim. It was loud, it was fast, it was the coolest looking car you'd ever want to see. And I was excited because now for senior year, we're going to be driving around the streets of Des Moines in a Camaro. And people are going to look at us and think how cool we are and how impressed they'll be with us. But then, as soon as Eric's dad bought him that Camaro, I mean, within a week, he had a girlfriend. And, and obviously, now he's not going to spend time with me if he has a girlfriend, and I get that. But it wasn't fair. I mean, now he's got a girlfriend and, and with this Camaro, and he's going to be off doing his thing. And I'm stuck with a Datsun B210 hatchback with manual transmission. So I decided I was going to approach my dad. And I did so with determination. I mean, I was focused and I was sincere. 
And I went into the garage as my dad was puttering around or something, and I said to him, Dad, you know what? Eric's dad just bought him a Camaro. Oh, really? Camaro, that's a nice car. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is a nice car, Dad. And you know what? Uh, he already has a girlfriend. Like within a week, he got this girlfriend. And my dad said, oh, that's nice. Is she a nice, nice girl? Not the point, Dad. <laughs> the point is that I think you should get me a Camaro. Why? Because you want a girlfriend? Not the whole reason, but part of it. And because I want to look cool at senior year. Come on. Don't you think that would be a good idea? Do you have enough money to get a Camaro? No. That's why you don't have a Camaro. Yeah, but Dad, you make a lot more money than I do. You, you've got all this money. It would be a lot easier if you were to just buy it and give it to me. And my dad looked at me and he said something like, I don't, I don't know that the best girl for your life is somebody that goes out with you just because you're driving a Camaro. He said, plus, I might add, I think you'd be a lot better off with a girl who goes out with you even though you drive a brown Datsun B210 hatchback with manual transmission, with manual transmission. No, I'm not buying you the Camaro. Grab the broom, let's clean up. So I was persistent, I was determined, I knew what was going to be best for me and my life at that point in time, senior year of high school, and as hard as I tried, the answer was no. And now, a few years later, looking back, I see how my life might very well have changed if I had that Camaro, but not necessarily for the better. And from all of this, I learned lessons about how if you really want something, you have to work hard to get it, and that relationships are not built on what kind of car you drive. The best answer for me to get was no, even though I didn't want to hear it then. In this parable, Jesus is saying there is determination on the part of God's people, crying out to him night and day. God is the one who will determine what we're going to get, what the answer is going to be, using his criteria, laced with love and forgiveness. And that's what takes us to the end of this parable, where Jesus talks about the greatest thing that God has given his people, whether they knew they needed it or not, he said, how much more will God give justice to his elect who cry out to him night and day, and this justice he will give speedily. It's no coincidence Jesus used that word speedily because in a very short time after speaking this parable, he would be going to a cross and justice would be given. God would be giving justice speedily, and a peculiar kind of justice it was. It was the kind of justice where your sins and mine were placed on someone else. And he took the punishment that we deserved. Jesus is the one who on the cross suffered the wrath and the consequences of sin so that we would be forgiven. That was the justice that was delivered. It was delivered for us, but not on us. And even today we cry out for this. Night and day, as we consider our sinfulness and what Jesus has done to forgive us, and we cry out for that forgiveness. In this parable, we see there is a distinction between being determined and the one who determines. For our part, we are determined, diligent in our prayers. It is God who determines out of his love and wisdom, what is best for us? And how sure can we be of this when we see what he has done for us already, carrying out justice on his son for our forgiveness and salvation? Amen. Let's stand.